So when we last left off, I was um, showing some of my uh, scraping sequence, um, the sequence of a cycle for me for scraping in this uh, fixed dovetail. And um, since then, I've done uh, a fair amount of work on the Gibbs side. Same kind of thing, checking perpendicularity of the Gibbs side to the column, and then using the straight master uh, uh, to check the flatness of the actual uh, dovetail. And I'm getting close now, so I want to do a couple things. I want to remeasure across the pins see um, what the width looks like and I want to kind of have an understanding as I blew each side I'm going to blow both sides at the same time and compare the width measurements to what I see on either side of the dovetail to see because a a wide measurement across the width could be a result of a high spot on this side, on this side, combination of the two, uh, perpendicularity of one versus the other. So there's a lot to check, uh, or I should say there's a lot of ways to check it, which in the end I'm trying to verify is it perpendicular to the column and are they parallel to one another. I'm just cleaning out the uh, dovetails. I'm getting rid of all the uh, measurements measurements I've made just recently. Got two five eight scowl pins. And then an 8 to 9 micrometer here. And what I try to do is I try to make sure that I've got the uh, anvil in the center of the dowel. And then I think Abom showed it. He was measuring the inside of a bore here just recently and uh, he showed uh, the rocking back and forth ever so slightly. And just when it stops when it stops rocking you know you have the anvils parallel to the dowel edges which is your measurement The actual measurement doesn't matter at this point. I'm looking for uh, relative change along the length. So that's that's kind of in the ballpark where I want to be is like this is this was 21 and uh, about five tenths. This is not a tenth uh, micrometer, but I'm um, using the scale and kind of making a ballpark guess at it. So 21.5 there, and it was a little on the north side of that. So 21.7 ish somewhere in there, and then I'll just repeat that along here and uh, map it out and see what it looks like. So this is what I ended up with after I measured everything here. It's a little bit of a glare from the lights, but uh, so up here at the column end, uh, this is the this is the widest point I've got. It's 21.8, um, and then this this I think is going to work out good for me because I got two sections here, 21.2. 
and I've got two sections down here that are at 21 2 so and those are the lows which um, means the the total between the high and the low is uh, six tenths right now so we're getting uh, really really close now so like like I said I've been able to get the um, the two dovetails uh, fairly straight at this point and when I measure across them with the dowels I've got about uh, six tenths of change between um, the high and the low spots through here and what I was looking for I was looking for confirmation of what I was reading with the uh, micrometer through the bluing of each of the two sides and uh, I had it blued up unfortunately uh, we had a really big uh, temperature swing here and humidity change and uh, that uh, plays havoc with everything here so I, uh, I had to clean everything off and get everything oiled up um, so anyways what I'm gonna do so as I was doing that sorry I uh, I couldn't see in the bluing what I was seeing across the, with the measurements across the dowels so I've been kind of pondering what's going on and I think what has happened is I've got I've got just a touch too much blue on the master so I'm spotting a lot of uh, area and uh, what, I, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get just a touch just a touch of bluing on the master and get both sides uh, spotted and see what we uh, see what we can find so with here. Uh, very little bluing and uh, a rouge background I was able to identify uh, the fixed side being um, very good the Gibbs side still having a couple of low spots in it and uh, normally what I was doing was I was measuring across the pins first writing down my measurements and then bluing and uh, this time I did the opposite I did the spotting identified across here where I have contact and then these uh, gaps here is where it seems to be a little bit uh, a little bit low there and then I changed my measuring system here I have a uh, a, th a three inch dowel here for the fixed side to span a little bit more area there and then I uh, cut down the uh, dowel cut it in half and I've got a one inch piece so I was looking for finer finer uh, detail across this face here and I actually do see that when I drop the small dowel into an area that did not have spotting I am seeing a smaller measurement across the dovetail so uh, it's matching up with what I'm seeing with the spotting and right now I've got a low of uh, nine tenths and a high of one four so I've got five tenths across this now or across the two now between a high and a low so I'm going to work this side here this gib side a little bit more and uh, try and get rid of the high spots so I've been through uh, I don't know maybe four or five cycles hitting uh, high spots and uh, this is what we look like this is from the column side So I've been working away at the um, dovetail here on the uh, on the uh, Gibbs side, and um, I apologize if uh, if this it seems to be repetitive, but it's just it's as I go through this process, I'm filming it, and I'm trying to make sure I capture what's happening, and uh, you know, so I can understand. Uh, what's gone what's gone on what's gone wrong and how do I correct it right and I'm getting uh, very close you can see I've got some writing on here this 
what's happened is because of the changes in the geometry the the actual gib is too narrow now uh, as I've been working on it it's been getting close but it's it's all the way in um, there's a couple of options you can shim the backside this is 10 thou here and you can glue that I mean that's just that's just uh, a rough shim there for helping me fit but uh, you can glue that on there I mean that's one option um, what I'm going to do though is I'm going to put 15 thou turkite on the surface that will actually contact the dovetail so that means uh, as far as the saddle goes all three surfaces will have turkite on them it'll be smooth 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 and um, that's kind of what I'm looking for so um, in the meantime I just want to do one more uh, geometry check make sure that when I put the gib in I'm gonna use the shim to get it fit fairly close uh, and then I'm gonna put the square on the back of the saddle and run it uh, fore and aft here and uh, see what we've got and um, go from there So with that gib adjusted right now, I'm just checking to see, um, checking the uh, saddle against the knee, see how much movement there is, and I've got about a half a thou there, which is, uh, I mean, you got to have some room for it to actually move. So we're gonna go with that. Check it for squareness now. I thought I would try this method here to uh, check how how parallel the two dovetails are running to one another so um, actually in the uh, machine tool reconditioning book by Connolly there is a a gauge that uh, is suggested that hooks into this dovetail here and monitors the uh, gibbed side of the dovetail to see f how parallel you are I'm struggling right now with the square on the back of the uh, saddle so I'm going to uh, try and have a look at this a different way so with the indicator mounted to the saddle and the saddle up against the fixed um, dovetail side the motion of the saddle running up and down the knee here will tell me how how parallel this side is relative to the fixed side and then I'm going to go back to using the square off the column and verifying how perpendicular the fixed side is to the column so the um, the video from the uh, GoPro camera here will be the parallelism of the two dovetails. This is quite a setup, but it's going to uh, it's going to do the job. This is the gauge that runs on the dovetail. And then uh, obviously the uh, indicator, and then I've got the uh, camera mounted through a mag base here, so I can get a shot of 
the dial indicator as I move the uh, gauge uh, back and forth on the uh, on the knee to check perpendicularity to the column. So by checking with uh, the square up against the column and running the indicator across this, uh, that's uh, straight within uh, probably about five tenths. And then um, with the checks I did earlier, this side here is running parallel to the fixed side. So all that being said, if I can uh, get this gib fitted, which I got to send it out, I'm going to have some turkite put on it, so I'm kind of going to stall here a little bit at this point, but if I can get that gib fitted uh, properly and uh, adjusted properly, the saddle should be moving perpendicular to the column.